Welcome back. Let's uh, quickly move on now to um, a very special book uh, which we'll be looking at. We are joined by the MIT professor Arup Chakrabarti. Uh, his new book, Viruses, Pandemics and Immunity, is a look ahead at the lessons that we have learned from the outbreak of the COVID pandemic, why pandemics happen in the first place, and among other things, how an integrated system of technologies will help us uh, respond more rapidly the next time something like this happens. Professor Chakravarti, thanks uh, very much for, for being with us. Now, I've gone through the book. It's absolutely fascinating. And, uh, you know, you've raised a couple of points and a couple of things which I just uh, wanted to uh, learn a little bit more about. Firstly, you say that coronaviruses are a family of RNA viruses. And for years, four different types of these viruses have circulated in the human population. And most of these we believe are essentially harmless, the common cold, for example. But is there a, really, is there a real threat that going forward, uh, the presence of new RNA viruses, such as uh, what we are encountering now with COVID, represent a far, far greater threat, not just COVID, but even the emergence of something else? Indeed. Uh, thank you very much for having uh, me on your show. Uh, uh, yes, indeed. RNA viruses are a class of viruses that use a very different mechanism for replicating themselves than we do. Uh, most organisms go from, you know, they encode information about their genome as DNA, and then that DNA is replicated to propagate the species. And we make proteins, which are the parts that make us all function, by going from DNA to RNA to proteins. RNA viruses do this differently. They carry their genome as RNA. And so they have to replicate this RNA, and they do that with a certain machinery that they bring with themselves when they enter our cells. And this machinery is not as high fidelity as the machinery that replicates DNA. So they make a lot of mutations, uh, that is, changes or mistakes. and. What happens is that as these mistakes arise, uh, there is always a chance that a new type of RNA virus will evolve that is very dangerous for us. Okay. Uh, another very important feature that has to be remembered is that many viruses that have infect us ever since we became agrarian are also shared with other animals. And so because this RNA genome is much more malleable, what can happen sometimes is that you can swap pieces of the RNA of the animal version of the virus with our human version of the virus. So typically, of course, these viruses are worthless. They don't infect humans. But once in a while, a variant can emerge that has, for example, in this case of coronavirus, a spike that is very different from what has been in the common cold viruses. And therefore, now no one in the human population has immunity to it, and you get this sort of right. very fast pandemic to spread. And, so, the, and, and coronavirus are not alone. In fact, if I would have to have predicted which will be the next pandemic, it would be influenza, which is also an RT virus. In fact, in fact Professor Chakrabarti, that, that brings me to my next question. Why do new viruses cause pandemics or epidemics? You've asked this in your book. Yeah, so... When you have a virus that has been circulating in our population for a while, then many of us have mounted immune responses to this, the way that we fight viruses. And so when we have immunity to this virus, that is, we have antibodies and other immune system cells, that if you see the next virus again, uh, the same virus again, we swat it away. But now, when a totally new virus emerges, nobody in the population has any form of immunity to it. So therefore, everyone gets, can, can potentially get infected and can then, if, if the virus at the same time is easily transmittable, such as many respiratory viruses, then it starts to spread very rapidly through the population. So it is because no one has immunity to it. If you wait long enough, a great fraction of us will get immunity to it. Along the way, a lot of us will die, but the virus will go away. This is how it used to happen in past times when we did not have the science of vaccination. Has COVID-19 um, actually reminded us of what is a truth which we often forget, 
um, that infectious disease causing viruses are perhaps the greatest exist existential threat to humanity, not wars. I think this is absolutely true. Um, the human history is inextricably linked to our war with infectious disease-causing micro, microscopic organisms. And we have had many, many battles with many, many diseases. And because of better sanitation, antibiotics, and vaccination, we have been winning these wars, even though our lifestyle has become such that it encourages the evolution of these viruses. So it is the greatest existential threat in the world. And what we really need to do now is after this battle with COVID is won, we are in a place of development and evolution of technology where we should ask ourselves, as an international community, should we try now to win the war? That is, to develop approaches to create a more pandemic resilient world, yeah. not just fight one battle at a time. Yeah. Professor Chakravarti, wonderful speaking to you, and I'm running short on time, so I'm just going to read a little bit about what you spoke about just now on the fight ahead. And you've written, modern computational power, advances in machine learning, and artificial intelligence, and mechanistic understanding of immunology and epidemiology can be brought together to analyze data that's now available and thus learn how viruses spread. Perhaps this is the key towards fighting all of this in the future. I'd like to thank you very much, sir, for being with us on this program. I'm out of time. It's time for us to take this short break. <laughs>